Greetings, students. How are we doing tonight? Yeah, I'm doing good, too. Thanks for asking. Oh, you never ask. Okay, so uh, what's on this video? Well, this is, video is all about solving two-by-two two systems. Sorry, let's go over here. Um, the ways, uh, methods we could use to solve two-by-two two systems include graphing, substitution, elimination, row echelon, and using inverse matrices. So I have four examples here, and uh, I'll try substitution and elimination on the first one, row echelon on the second one, on the third one, row echelon, and inverse matrices, and on the last one, let's just start um, and using inverse matrices. Now the way I design these videos is they're try along, so I encourage you guys to try the problems yourself, um, pause the video, try the problems, and then um, you can listen to me work out the problems. So, um, if you want to try number one, go for it. Okay, number one asks first to use substitution. And uh, just a heads up if you were confused, this was a Y, not a 4. Um, I apologize, writing on the stylus isn't very easy for me. Um, so what we can do here is solve for Y um, in equation number two. Solve for Y. I'm going to substitute that back into equation one and then solve for x and see what happens. So I have 3x minus 8 plus 8x equals 1. Um, add 8 to the other side. Combine my, um, there we go, combine my x's. I have 11x, so I get x is 11 ninths. Now I can substitute x equals 11 ninths, say, into the first equation. And let's remember 3 times 3 is um, 9, so that would eliminate one of the 3's. Um, subtract 11 thirds to the other side. I'm writing it as uh, 3 over 3. And it looks like I have negative 8 over 3 equals negative 2y. Uh, multiply both sides by 1 half here and I get that uh, negative one-half, excuse me. I get that y equals 8 6, which reduces to 4 thirds. So my solution for this using substitution should be um, x was 11 ninths, y was 4 thirds. And I could have solved that as well using elimination, so let's just see how I would have done this uh, using elimination. Um, I look at this, I go, okay, I got a plus y, a negative 2y. Um, let's just multiply this side by positive 2. And uh, doing so, I'm going to leave the first uh, equation alone. Uh, 4x, excuse me, not 4x, I'm doubling it, so it'll be 8x plus 2y equals 8. Uh, can add those together. 11 x equals 9 that looks familiar and I get x equals 11 ninths and um, I guarantee if we put it back in there y would equal 4 thirds okay let's try number 2 Number two, we're supposed to use row echelon. So let's write our augmented matrix here. And our augmented, ma augmented matrix will be 1, negative 2, 4, 2, 2, 2. Um, so my first step, as usual, is to get this guy right here to be a 0. So what I can do is I could take my row 2 and subtract 2 of my row 1s. And in doing so, I get uh, 1, negative 2, 4, um, 0. So it's uh, this minus 2 of those. That's going to be 2 minus 2 times negative 2. It's going to give me positive 6. And uh, this 2 minus 2 of those is going to give me negative 6 here. 
Um, so clearly here, hopefully you can see this without having to do another step, but this is 6z equals negative 6. So, oops, sorry, not z. Um, 6y equals negative 6, so y equals negative 1. And we could put negative 1, let's say, into the first equation. And I hope you see that this is going to be x plus 2 equals 4. And clearly here, x has to equal 2. So my solution here should be 2, negative 1. That wasn't too bad, right? Well, let's try number 3. So number 3 I want you to try in two different ways. Row echelon and using inverse matrices. So row echelon, that's exactly what we just did. Um, so we'll have negative 2, 4, 3, 1, negative 2, 8. Um, so again, I want this guy to be 0. Well, if I take two of my row 2s and subtract one of my row 1s, I will get that first term to be 0. Then that's negative 2. It's a minus there. Um, so that's actually going to make that a plus because I can't read my own handwriting. All right, so two of these uh, plus one of those, two of these plus one of these. That's also going to get me zero, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. And two of these um, plus one of those will get me 16. Will get me, sorry, 16, 19. Okay, something happened here. I got double zeros. Uh, I eliminated both my x's and my y's. And if this number isn't zero, what that means is I have an inconsistent system. And there's no solution. Um, if we actually look carefully, um, all I have to do is multiply this one by negative, uh, by negative two. And I get uh, not the whole equation, but I get this part of that equation. That's telling me here I have two parallel lines that will never inter intersect. So these will be inconsistent. Now I wanted to talk about the matrix method too here. If I were to use the inverse matrices here, um, this would be my coefficient matrix A and my uh, solution matrix would be 8. Sorry, 3, 8. Now in finding the uh, inverse matrices in inverse matrix of of inverse A. Uh, if you recall, I kind of used this formula here in class the other day. I said that if you want to find the inverse of a um, of a two by two, what we can do is is do one divided by the determinant, and then we switch the main diagonal and we make the minor diagonal negative. Well, let's see what happens when I look for the determinant of A. Um, the determinant, as we recall, is this diagonal minus this diagonal. So that's negative 2 times negative 2 minus uh, 4 times 1. That's going to be 4 minus 4. That's going to be 0. So if I was to actually try to find the, uh, if I was going to use that here, uh, since the determinant is 0, using the inverse matrix, uh-oh, I'd be dividing by 0. And you all know what would happen by, if I divide by 0. I would, that was, that's a horrible flame. I would uh, totally start a fire, and we can't do that. Um, what I'd have to do, probably, if I did start this fire, is, is come here with water, and, oops, uh, what did I do here? and spray water all over this fire and turn it out. Why? Because I'm dividing by zero. <laughs> Long story short, nice little shortcut. If I get that the determinant of a, of a matrix is zero, um, this is also going to be inconsistent. It's, um, in fact, if the determinant is zero, we say the matrix, matrix is invertible. I can't take the um, inverse of this matrix. So, yeah. All right, last problem, number four. So number four, we're going to try doing um, strictly this time with uh, using the inverse matrices. And I think this time this one will work. 
So this will be my matrix A. My matrix B will be my solutions there, 1 and 4. And what I need to do is find A inverse. Uh, so I'll do it this way, the way I originally taught you how to um, do the inverse matrix. So again, like usual, my goal is to get going to be to get that one a zero. So what I can do is if I take two row, uh, take my row two and minus two row one, that'll cancel that out. So I haven't done anything to the first row yet. So it was uh, one of these minus two of those. One of these minus two of those will get me negative one. One of these minus two of those will get me negative two. And one of these minus two of those will get me um, one. Uh, let's see. Next thing I want to do is make this guy right there a zero. Um, to do that, I'm going to have to um, take my row 1 and add two of my row 2's to it. So um, so row 1, so one of these plus two of those, one of these plus two of those, one of these plus two of those, so that'll be 1 plus negative 4 will get me negative 3, one of these plus two of those will get me 2, and I'll leave my... Uh, bottom row alone. Um, last one, the uh, first row, just divide everything by three, and uh, the bottom row just switch the signs. So I have one, zero, negative one, two thirds, and I have zero, one, two, negative one. Okay, this is my inverse matrix, what we found right there.